Welcome back, uh, baseball fans, to the 1970-73 draft analysis uh, for the keep wave and retire for the draft, uh, the 2560. Uh, we're still looking at that spreadsheet. We're going to take a, a in more in-depth look at the players available. Uh, we did this last week, and we looked... Uh, for three teams, try to find a first round pick for the Indians, the Rockies, and Toronto. And we're going to pick it up tonight. We're just going to keep moving quickly and see if I can get through maybe a half dozen or more teams. Early sketch in pencil or charcoal. <laughs> uh, who they might pick in the first round. Um, as it is still early in the process. The team picking fourth is the Cubs. And the Cubs uh, bring back Ernie Banks, a young Larry Gura, Jim Hickman, Don Kessinger, Billy Sorrell, Billy Williams with a monster year, Beckert with a monster year, Jeff Stad, Newman, Ortiz, recently acquired Bert Hooten and Milt Pappas. Very good pitchers. Of course, um, we have the guys available to them in the next section. Plus, of course, you also have down at the bottom of the spreadsheet guys who hadn't been into the league yet and rookies. Let's look at rookies first. That's down here in 70, 71, 2, and 3. Your Cub rookies, who could be first round picks, and there's a decent number of them Chuck Brinkman, Pat Bork, Carmen Fanzone, Gene Heiser. None of those really sound like much. But then you got Ray Burris and Rick Russell. You know, they would be Cubs for a decent amount of time. Burris only pitches 64 innings, but he's in a nice area at 292. But it's early in his career. We don't need him yet. At least not in the first round. And Rick Russell is on the rotation uh, with a whip of a buck 29. That's nice. It's not great. I don't think it'll ever really be great. I mean, he really has his best years later in his career with the Giants, as I recall, and the Pirates, I think. But that's because pitching in really Field will tend to do that for you. But let's go back up. I spotted a guy before I jumped down here. I should have just jumped on immediately. And that is in the fields of blue. Again, the yellow fields are your two wavered guys. Reds are retires. The light greens are guys you already have, but you want to make them better. Uh, I would be remiss if I didn't mention that uh, Billy Williams' incredible 1970 card with the 42 homers and 322 batting average is a 977 OPS, and yet in 1972, he comes back with 333, 37 homers, and 1,005 OPS. So... I think you get the best of both worlds there. Just keep what you have until it expires and then do the bump when the card is eventually available. But your keepers are Randy Hunley, Fergie Jenkins, Ron Sano, Del Unser. I need, no, I need go no further than Fergie Jenkins. The golden years of Fergie. 320 win years, 66 wins in three seasons between 70 and 72. And his ERA is under 1.1 each time. This is what we call a no-brainer. Fergie Jenkins will be the first-round pick of the Cubs. The J uh, Cubs will have to do a little further analysis to see which year they pick. You love the flexibility, but it is BPA, best player available, got to take Fergie first. So you have to determine through flexibility if you are weak in the years of 70, 71, or 72, with the rest of your players. And if you're weak in one of those years, take Fergie. That way you only have to take one more player from a weak year. Tell you how we do that when we have very versatile players annually putting up nice numbers. All right, team batting uh, fifth in the draft, San Diego Padres. Always a fun team to draft for. Never know what to expect with these guys during this era. They have a very interesting offense right now. They need some nice pieces to add to it to threaten the other teams in the West. Unfortunately, 
or maybe fortunately. As far as the keepers go, they don't have a lot of options. They have an interesting Clay Dalrymple card with a <laughs> a 204 batting average, but a 409 on base percentage. So that's a fun card, and I think that card will get into the league, but it's not a first round pick. Al Ferrara, 277 with an 816 OPS is pretty nice. But nothing more than that. Joe Gibbons, a nice lefty reliever. Nothing special. Dick Kelly, again, nothing special. So none of these keepers look good. A guy to improve. We talked about that. We showed, we looked at improved players in previous videos. We mentioned that they did not have anybody. Um, I'll quick, let me just quickly bring that sheet up. Um, because it's fun to look at the... Um, here they are. And yeah, we mentioned before that the Potters don't have anybody really interesting in that in that a green category that needs improvement. So if a team is really struggling to figure out who they're gonna pick in the first round, getting on the phone and making a trade might make an option. But the Potters are always getting uh, uh, youngsters from their fertile farm system, and they have a bunch. All of these guys are 1973. It is a long list. Some interesting players here. Johnny Grubb, Enzo Hernandez, Dave Hilton, Fred Kendall, Jerry Morales, Dave Roberts, the hitter, not the pitcher, Dave Winfield, Mike Caldwell, Mike Corkins, Bill Grief, Randy Jones, Rich Trosden, and John Vugovich. Holy smokes, folks. This is the blooming of the San Diego Padres. Now, a couple things. Let's start with the Hall of Famer, Winfield. 73, he has 141 plate appearances and he's decent. He's 277, but his defense is bad. He's a four in the outfield, and we know he's a better defensive player than that. So you may want to wait, give him a little more seasoning, and bring him up in a future year when you've got some room in the outfield. Because the Padre outfield is clogged up. When we look at the uh, keepers for them, they have Ollie Brown, Cito Gaston, and Laron Lee and Nate, and Nate Colbert at first base. So you got corner and outfield filled up. Lefty starting pitcher, you got Dave Roberts. And that, and that is it. That's the only lefty present. That would open the door for Randy Jones, folks. Is Randy Jones worth the first round pick? Well, in his rookie season, just establishing him, he, he's 7-6 and six with a 316 ERA in 139 innings. But more impressive, his whip is a buck 18. So I know he doesn't pitch on the rotation, but this is the Padres, and I think it's, it might be, behoove them to draft Randy Jones with their first round pick. All right, next up, Texas Rangers. Texas Rangers. Let's look at their rookies first. There's some down here. And they should have a lot of them. Bad teams have a tendency to have a lot of rookies. Larry Bittner, Jeff Burrows, and he has a full season. Tom Grieve, Toby Hara, Jim Mason, Jim Bibby, David Clyde, Steve Dunning, Steve Focott, Bill Stein, Larry Stahl. Well, Hara and Burrows make the most sense. Burrows is a full season, 605 plate appearances. 279 with 30 home runs. Boom, that's the guy. And he would team up with Frank Howard and Mike Epstein. Gives the Rangers a lot of power in year one. Toby Hare, on the other hand, is only so-so. He's a 260 hitter with 10 homers. Good enough to get into the league. Not good enough to be a first-round pick. And maybe you don't need to even take him yet. Maybe you wait till he's even better than that. But let's look up here, do a due diligence, and see if there's any other Rangers. Mike Epstein, Bill Hans, Frank Howard, and Ed Stroud. When you consider BPA, you have to look at Frank Howard's year as a 33-year-old outfielder with 44 home runs with, with only three years left versus Jeff Burrows to be the first-round pick. I think you can go back either way. You can go Frank Howard in the first round or, and Jeff Burroughs in the second round in different years, and that would qualify for them. 
All right, so they got they got they got some nice options there. Not worried about the Rangers. Next team, the Hot Lanter Braves. Winners of, as I can say it now, uh, winners of the Major League Baseball World Series. Congratulations to the present-day Atlanta Braves for winning the World Series. Okay, enough of that nonsense. <laughs> Let's see who Atlanta has in the serious baseball league that uh, we're following. Oh, no-brainer. We can just stop right here. I don't have to do anything else. You got to go Rico Cardi, BPA. And why? Well... Folks, 1970 Rico Cardi, it's 366, 454 with a 1037 OPS. End of analysis. Next up, Milwaukee. I love it when your first round picks are no brainers because that means the draft can go smoothly. And that's why kind of doing this ahead of time and sort of looking at a potential template is helpful. We're going to identify teams that are looking to trade. We identified already, of course, that Cleveland, at the very top of the draft, wants to trade out a pick or trade for Frank Robinson, the Hall of Famer, because they have nobody on the pipeline that's that interesting. After the Braves, we next bring up the Milwaukee Brewers. They are getting better, slowly but surely. It's going to be a while before Robin Yount emerges. I think we're a year or two away from him. The Brewers, their keepers are Gellner, Hovley, McMullen, and Mincher. Um, nothing there really sticks out. Don Mincher's got a nice 71. 291, 826 OPS. That's a candidate for a first round pick, though you're hoping for more. As far as the uh, Brewer improvement option, Marty Patton and Bill Parsons get a little bit better, but that's not first round improvement worthy. So Mincher is looking like the guy, and I'm sure Milwaukee will have a nice little farm system here. Let's go see who they have coming up the pipe. The Brewers. Yeah, they have a lot in 1973. Pedro Garcia, Tim Johnson, Daryl Porter. Nice little brewer there. Gorman Thomas, too young. Bill Champion, Jim Colburn. Chris Short, Jim Slayton would be a nice one. Kurt Bavacqua, Bill Sharp. Uh, you gotta be careful with Slayton. He's got a, he pitches a lot. He's an innings eater, but sometimes those innings uh, involve putting a lot of guys on base. So let me look at Slayton. He's 371 ERA in 276 innings with a buck 32 whip. That's what I'm talking about. That's a fine pitcher, but I mean, it's never, it's not a dominating pitcher, but he's an innings eater for a young team. Don't quite think that's first round pick ish, but. The difference between him and Randy Jones is Jones's whip was below 120, which is like that that mark I grade pitchers on. But then keep that whip below 1.2. I like that. Um, but Slayton does deliver the 38 starts, which is outstanding. So if they need an innings eater, Slayton makes sense. Let's take a peek at Daryl Porter. He's not quite ready, is he? 416 plate appearances, a 254 batting average, and an 820 OPS. When you look at all of these brewers and you look at the OPS category, Porter is the best. Between him and Mincher, it's kind of a toss up. As far as the pitchers, the best pitcher, it will be Jim Colburn. And actually, after close examination, Colburn might fit the category. He is a 20 game winner, like Slayton, but he pitches 314 innings. Weird that he had, in that many innings, he only had 36 starts and he had seven more relief appearances. But his ERA is, a, uh, his whip is a buck 22. So it's a little bit better than Slayton. Colbert makes sense because he's a 20 game winner and BPA is what you're looking for. So 
I'm just going to say at this point, there's nothing really flashy for the Brewers. There's no alarm bells going off that they need to trade out of the pick, but they, they might just have an average pick in the first round. Ohio players, the team from Ohio, they are struggling right now for talent. Let's go right to their rookies and see if some young youngster comes on the scene. Now, the Ohio players, you're, you're going to see that the um, a lot of these expansion teams that didn't exist aren't going to have a fertile farm system because these are just the leftover players that were in the farm system in previous years that weren't drafted or were drafted in the individual 73 draft. And uh, we have Dan Driesen is an interesting player. Uh, George Hendrick and Dan Driesen. Driesen was playing for Cincinnati in 73 and he hit 301 but not with a lot of power with a 731 OPS. George Hendrick played for Cleveland in 73 very similar 268 hitter with a uh, 760 OPS a little more power if you wait for both of these guys they'll do better if you're desperate for talent you'll take one or both of them the other two uh, players aren't per very interesting we talked about Ohio maybe improving guys and go the route Las Vegas did last year where they improved four of their own players but let's see if there's a guy in the keepers here oh we do yeah we've, we've got a couple guys so we're safe we have Al Downing and Rudy May along with Bill Robinson and L. Rod Hendricks. So three of those guys have monster years. So the Ohio players aren't going to worry about those rookies. They've got guys in their own system that they kept. And Bill Robinson has a nasty 73 card with the Phillies. 288, 855 OPS, 25 bombs. That's a great card. That's very, yeah, I'd say that's a first round pick. I don't want to get too picky here on the border being a first round pick. Rudy May, three years on the rotation as a lefty starter with the ERAs below 120. That's fine. But I think Al Downing will deliver the goods the best. Al Downing is a 20 game winner in 71 with a 268 ERA and a buck 25 whip. He goes on the rotation again in 72 and 73. He doesn't quite do it, but he has his best years at least through whip. So, Ohio, I'm not worried about these guys either. Sort of similar to Milwaukee. No obvious choice, but you do have enough candidates. All right, Arizona. And we'll do like three more teams. How many have we done here now? Seven, eight, nine. But we'll get to, we'll get to 12 teams. So we'll do Arizona, the Expos, and the Cardinals. All right, Arizona is the very top, of course, alphabetically. And you can just page up to the home screen here. I can also take a peek quickly since I have this tool I made. And look at there. And of course, of all their uh, carry on guys, only Steve Braun gets a little bit better. So I'm not really excited about that. Um, Dobson, Daryl Knowles, Popovich, Tatum. Now, they acquired Knowles and Tatum in the offseason trades. They traded with the Rangers and with the Angels. So they were sought after, so you might as well see if you can get their best years. Daryl Knowles, what a wonderful pitcher he is out of the bullpen. His 71 season, he's got uh, his ERA is high, but his whip is low. Very weird player because in 72, his ERA is low and his whip is high. So it's about looking closely at the card and seeing what you want. Daryl Knowles, all in relief. So in 71, he's got a 359 ERA, but he's got a buck 06 whip. I think this might be home runs or something. You must be giving up home runs, which is why you're not giving up a lot of hits, but your ERA is high. And in the next year, the ERA is a buck 37, but his whip is high. Very strange combination of statistics there. So they can decide if, if, if one of these Daryl Knowles is a first round pick. 
Ken Tatum had an all-star performance three years in a row for the Angels, but his game starts to slide a little bit. His 70 card's very good, though. I would call that a stud closer. Buck 06, whip, 294 ERA in 88 innings. Be your closer. He could be worthy of a first-round pick. Let's check out the Arizona rookies. The Arizona Rookies. Oh, Reggie Cleveland's good. Reggie Cleveland, Chris Arnold, Gene Locklear, Clyde Mayshore, Ray Corbin, Dick Bainey. Actually, Corbin's also has a good year here somewhere. Locklear's not quite ready. He's got a nice 1975 coming up. Reggie Cleveland is really nice. Uh, 14 and 10 with the Cardinals with a 301 ERA in 224 innings and a buck 21 whip. That's pretty good for an expansion team to get. The only thing you might want to look at is what happens if you wait, does Reggie Cleveland get better in 74 or 75? I'm not sure. If that would be something. But that I would say that's worthy of a first-round pick for an expansion team, Reggie Cleveland. This Ray Corbin for the Twins actually has some nice stats in one of these years. Here, yeah, 303 ERA, a buck 24 whip. He doesn't, uh, mostly in relief, a relief starter. But I think he's a relief four starter seven, which gives him value. So, I'm liking Reggie Cleveland and out of this compared to those other guys as a first round pick. Because you want to do this BPA, best player available. That's how we keep it fair and keep it uh, as competitive as we possibly can. The Expos. Plus, it, I mean, you know, I don't want to, I don't, I'm doing all this myself and I don't really want to push one team's agenda over another. So that's why it's got to be BPA is the ultimate. And that's usually, I mean, I, I factor in statistics, but I also think about defense and um, it ultimately becomes a gut decision with the idea being if I, if I, if I, if I can become 32 baseball teams GM and do a great job, that means the baseball season I would be playing would be a very fun competitive baseball season with a lot of games involved. That's what you're trying to do versus uh, line up one team with a Hall of Fame roster. You don't necessarily want to do that because it would be predictable and tedious. All right, we'll do the Expos and then the Cardinals and call it the Expos. Uh, Steve Renko and Bill Stoneman get a little bit better, but not worth a first round pick for those guys. Not the greatest error for this team, but they need about six or seven more years. You know, the Gary Carter, Ellis Valentine, Warren Cromarty years to get before they're dangerous. All right, Hal Breeden's got a nice 73 card. Tim Foley, Jorgensen's got a nice card in 74. Lentz, Stinson, Steve Rogers, bingo. So as far as rookie goes, Rogers jumps off the page. He only had 17 starts in the second half of the year of 73, and he proved his worth. A stellar 154 ERA and a buck 06 whip. So I, the temptation is, well, why don't you wait till he pitches on three days rest? And I'm saying, let's get this card going now and just dominate <laughs> for the next four years, and then we'll worry about pitching on three days rest. You know, I'm not that concerned with the ability to pitch on three days rest when you're that dominant. So I'm thinking Steve Rogers, arguably one of the greatest pitchers in Expo history, if not the best, wouldn't make sense as the first round pick. Competing with Ron Fairley, Mac Jones, Rusty Staub, and Gary Wazalewski. Now, we talked before that Rusty Staub could be getting traded to the New York Mets. We discussed the Rusty Staub for Ken Singleton trade. So that wouldn't uh, derail the, uh, Steve Rogers as the first overall pick. Ron Fairley has, he's getting up there. He's in his mid thirties. He's got some nice years in the two seventies, but Steve Rogers to me seems like a no-brainer. And lastly tonight, the Cardinals. And this was this was the hard times of the Cardinals in the early 70s. Even though Bob Gibson will deliver for them and Lou Brock and a young Ted Simmons, after 68, they don't reach the, you know, they, it takes them all the way to 1982 
to get back to the World Series. And unfortunately, they're now in a division with the Cincinnati Reds, who they weren't in Major League Baseball, but now they are in my league, and the Pittsburgh Pirates. So they're clearly the third best team annually for the next decade. And that's not that's very unfortunate for this team. So they've got to really overachieve to steal the Reds or Pirates playoff spot. Let's take a look at the Cardinals. Well, Lou Brock, Julian Avier, Chuck Taylor, and Rick Wise. Well, as far as Hall of Fame, where are you going, Lou Brock? Does he deliver from 70? He does. Interesting. One of these years is 72, but that's probably 1973. I'm save that. That's a mistake. So, yeah, four straight years, full seasons, 300 or about, 360 or about on base, tons of stolen bases, 50, 60, or 70. The great thing is um, he's so flexible that you can pick the year of Brock. He's your BPA, unless there's a stunning rookie I'm not aware of. Let's go quickly see if there's a Cardinal to be renewed ahead of Brock, though I doubt it. Ted Abernathy, Bill Sadakis, Ted Simmons. But now Lou Brock is the is the best of that. And now the Cardinal rookies competing with Brock at this point would be. Here they are. You've got Bake McBride, Ken Reitz, Mike Tyson, Rich Folkers, Albert Bowski, Orlando Pena, Mike Adams, Gonzalo Marquez. Nice Cardinal players for the decade. Uh, McBride doesn't get to stick around long enough for the Cardinals. Um, he does hit 302 in 73, which is nice and will probably be, could be drafted if there's space in the outfield. I would take him. Uh, none of these other hitters hit very well. Kenny Reitz is known for his glove. A 2E10 at third base. Al Roboski, he's our, yeah, he, Al Roboski and Payne, you know, good relievers. Um, Roboski's got a monster 75, but Boy, yeah, him and Orlando Pena via Rays at round two. But still, you go with Lou Brock. As a BPA best player available, I'm going to go with a Hall of Famer. Um, so Lou Brock would be the first pick. And again, but they got a, they got some nice picks um, in this draft. This is where, when I talked about flexibility, is you want to identify by this process, a player in each of the four years, 71, two, three, and four. Once you've identified players other than Lou Brock and you find a year that you're short, then draft Lou Brock in the year that you're short. That way you've got strength in all four years, right? Because really, looking at Brock, except for maybe defense, he was a 2 in 69, and he's a 3 in 71, and then he's a 4 in 72 and 3. Other than that, the performance is almost identical every year. So, so again, it's identifying which of the four years in 70 to 73 do the Cardinals not have a lot of talent coming through the system. And that'll be the next part of the analysis for the Cardinals. But again, that is something that can be done uh, in March. Uh, when the draft is near. Um, but we have looked through a dozen teams to this point, and uh, we'll pick this up again next week, maybe get through another dozen teams perhaps, or at least get through this in two more video clips. It's a pretty fun analysis. Uh, thanks for uh, checking out the video. We'll see you next time.